This is KGW News at Sunrise. Coming up here on Sunrise, the deadline fast approaching to pay Portland's arts tax. It's been around for a decade now, and we're going to show you where all that money has gone. And TriMet wants to go all electric by 2040, and it's well on its way. A look at its progress and new technology coming up. And we are live out in West Lynn this morning, chomping on some <laughs> alfalfa early in the morning. This is Triska Lee Farms in West Lynn. We're going to meet some of their special farm hands throughout the show. <laughs> They're going to be open all spring break. It's like a, you know, live petting zoo, basically. They have ostriches, llamas, obviously uh, Go okay, how cute are they? They I are just them. munching away on your Tuesday morning. <laughs> it's quite pleasant to start our day, actually. I know, it brings a smile to your face. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Rod has us all excited about yeah. warmer weather today. So We're starting out so So, oh, oh, here comes the couch. Yeah, it's yeah. not great, is it? Yeah. Right now. It's not great. We need to be, uh, 68 would make this the warmest day of the year so far. It was 67 on February 11th. That's crazy. You think we can beat February 11th? I hope so. Come Tell on. Us. Let's go to the weather map. Now, sometimes I make fun of the anchors because they make the current weather seem so horrible. It is kind of nasty out this morning. <laughs> we, have, we have low clouds, all these low green spots are mist and light rain, so it's wet outside, kind of foggy. This is the camera atop the Wells Fargo building looking down. You can barely see the city lights. Now, it is a warm batch of air. We're at 49 degrees. So if we can just get some sun, the temperature will soar. Let's go to the bus stop. It could still be misty in spots when the kids get going this morning, about 48 degrees. Assuming we have sunshine before noon and 58, we will warm to around 67 by 3 or 4, and we could be 70 at 5 p.m., and that is your forecast. All right, we could be. Rod, thank you. Day two of Judge Katanji Brown-Jackson's confirmation hearing gets underway here in about an hour. Yes, she'll spend about 12 hours today answering questions from the Senate Judiciary Committee. Then, over the next two days, the 51-year-old will face tough scrutiny from senators. Republicans are already accusing Judge Jackson of being soft on crime, while Democrats praise her experience as a federal judge and a public defender. In her statements yesterday, she vowed if she's confirmed, she'll decide cases, quote, without fear or favor. I commit to you that I will work productively to support and defend the Constitution. Democrats are pushing to confirm the president's pick by mid-April. After this week's hearings, Judge Jackson will continue to meet with senators and she could be confirmed without any Republican support. Well, a reminder for those who have to pay Portland's arts tax, the deadline is fast approaching. That $35 tax approved by Portland voters in 2012 is due April 18th. Any adult living within the city limits who's earned at least $1,000 is required to pay it. So after a decade, the city says it's collected $100 million. So here's the breakdown of where it's gone. 63% of that tax money has gone to schools, 26% to grants for local arts organizations, and 11% has gone to administering the tax itself. So what does that mean in the classroom? Well, before the tax kicked in, the Portland School District had 31 elementary arts teachers. Now it has 100. The city says the tax has made sure every grade school student in Portland has the option of taking art, music, dance, or drama classes. Small businesses hurt by the pandemic are getting a little extra financial help thanks to a credit card company. As part of its Main Street America program, American Express has awarded three small Oregon companies $5,000 each. Devin Haskins talked with a local cafe in Staten about how these past two years have impacted them. Devin. Yeah, good morning, Brenda. The Covered Bridge Cafe is a small cafe in the historic part of downtown Staten. That's just east of Salem. They were one of 75 across the nation awarded the grant money. The owner says they survived thanks to the community supporting them for these past two years. And when COVID hit, the cafe closed its dining room, laid off its employees, and that left owner Carrie Sessoms and her small family to handle everything. Her regulars would come and order food, even bringing a heater to drink coffee outside the cafe just to help them stay afloat. She says because of the community, they made it through COVID, and that community is what she's always given back to, even serving meals during Thanksgiving. This past year, they fed more than 1,700 people. Now she's giving back once more. This $5,000 grant awarded by American Express will be spent on a local high school 
a youth sports organization, and most of all, she says, her employees. The rest, she says, she'll bank for a rainy day. It's a relief. I mean, it's, we're gonna be okay, and so now I can show my community, hey, thanks for making us okay. Um, take care of my employees that have been relentless with me every step of the way. And um, it's just this little sense of security. Now, two other businesses, the Ale and Cider House in West Lynn and at Phil Wines in Newburgh, were also awarded the grant money. Another round of grants is open now. So if you're a small business owner and would like more info, you can just head to their website, MainStreet.org. Nina. All right, Devin, thank you. Oregon's emergency rental assistance program is now closed. The state stopped accepting applications at midnight this morning. It was originally supposed to end last Monday, but was extended for a week after the state received another $16 million in federal funds. Since 2020, the program has paid out more than $302 million to nearly 46,000 households. We're learning more this morning about an apartment fire in Beaverton that left 10 people without a home. The fire began Sunday night and engulfed this fourplex. Crews were putting out hot spots when they discovered an animal cage on one family's front porch. After clearing away some debris, they found a pet rabbit inside. We were able to round up the bunny inside the cage and then brought it over to one of the gals in the family to reunite the bunny with her and she was very happy. I bet she was. The rabbit is fine. So is everyone else, thankfully. Crews haven't determined yet what caused this fire. The Red Cross is working with the families to find temporary housing. A vote today will decide if a Yamhill County commissioner will keep her job. This is the second recent recall effort for that area. You may remember the recall of two Newburgh school board members, which failed. This latest one is for County Commissioner Lindsay Bershauer. A group called Save Yamhill County claims her policies have favored her own interests and her donors rather than taxpayers. They say this has cost the county millions of dollars. One example they cite is a trail project that she blocked, saying it would infringe on farmers' land rights. Both sides say they received attacks or threats during this recall. And there, here's a leader of the recall effort, followed by Commissioner Bershauer. Posting the home address of our recall pack director, Lynette Shaw, on her Facebook and telling people, you know, go give her a piece of your mind. She has since received threatening letters at that address, um, you know, death threats. None of it's good, right? That we don't want to have that level of discourse. We, we should be able to have healthy political debates um, and, and be able to agree to disagree. So... It's not something I support, but it does go both ways. And I will respond and I will um, stand up for myself. Save Yam Hill County says it's represented by independents, liberals and conservatives. But Commissioner Bershauer, who is conservative, says this is a move by progressives to get her out of office. Those recall ballots are due today. Last week, we brought you kind of a snapshot of some Oregon lawmakers who are quitting, saying they just can't stay in politics and make ends meet. Yeah, the story team has been digging into those legislators' salaries and wanted to know how Oregon compares to other states. Pat Doris has the update. Last week, we heard from three state representatives who say they won't run for re-election in the fall because they can't support families on the legislative salary. Karen Power from Milwaukee, Rachel Prusak from West Lynn, and Anna Williams of Hood River made that decision after a bill that would have raised lawmaker pay failed to pass the Oregon legislature. So how low is their pay? Well, lawmakers get less than $33,000 a year. On top of that, they do get a per diem of $151 a day during the session. That's to pay for food and living expenses. If we add their salary to their per diem, they make about $57,000 during the regular session years and about $38,000 in the short session years. After our segment aired, we got this question from Barb who wrote, just curious if Oregon is an outlier or do other states pay their legislators similarly? Well, we don't have a simple answer for you because the states pay their lawmakers all over the board. It's a whole wide range of different amounts and lawmakers work different amounts of time as well. So let's start with Oregon's neighbor, Washington State. Lawmakers are paid between 64 and 69,000 bucks a year, depending on the length of the session. California pays its lawmakers higher than any other state. They make six figures, more than $165,000 a year. 
On the other end of the spectrum, lawmakers in Wyoming make between five and $10,000 a year, depending on the session length. But keep in mind, California lawmakers work full time. Oregon and Washington lawmakers do not. We're one of the states in gray on this map that are considered hybrid legislatures. Those states typically pay less than full time lawmaker states in the green there. But the National Conference of State Legislatures says lawmakers in hybrid states typically say that they spend more than two thirds of a full time job being lawmakers. So that's a reason that Oregon lawmakers want more money because their jobs are more extensive than just part time. That makes it hard to devote enough time to a second job to make ends meet. Well, speaking of politics, Oregon's primary is just two months away and there are officially more than 40 candidates running for governor, 16 Democrats, 21 Republicans, one independent and three unaffiliated candidates have entered the race. Unaffiliated candidates will bypass the primaries and appear directly on the November ballot. Our digital team put together a comprehensive story, including every candidate running. You can check it out now at KGW.com. TriMet is looking to combat climate change by going all electric. The agency set a goal of transitioning to a zero emission bus fleet by 2040. It's testing electric bus technology right here in Portland and Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici took a tour. This is the future. The future will be electric and that's true. Uh, we're seeing it in the auto industry. A lot of that is, is being uh, led by the auto industry where they're transitioning to electric vehicles and we need it in mass transit as well. Bonamici, by the way, is the only member of Congress from the Pacific Northwest on the House Select Committee for the Climate Crisis. All right, Rod Hill joining us again and yes. uh, people making their plans for the second day of spring break. What's yes. on tap for today? Well, I would stay indoors for a little while and then start your day <laughs> around 1030. How's that sound? Oh, I'm seeing that sounds wonderful. In sandals. Do you have she sandals? Was, she was counting well, on the 70 degrees. It's always warm in here. I feel like I'm the only believer in my forecast. And let me tell you, this is not unusual. Here's a look <laughs> at our day planner. We have a very cloudy start. We have misty light rain out there. So you're going to be turning on your wipers if you're leaving in the next hour or so. We're mild, though. It's a warm batch of air, 49 degrees. So it stands to reason. If we could just get rid of the clouds and get rid of the light rain, the sun would only have to warm us up to about 20 degrees or so to hit 70 for a high, which I do think if we start clearing around 1030 or 11 o'clock this morning, that that is a possibility. All right, so the uh, the weather flow clouds going up around us. Remember, this is the moisture flow that was channeling yesterday's one half of an inch of rain into Portland. That's what we picked up uh, at the airport. Right now, that has shifted to our north, but this morning we're still getting low level moisture producing some light mist. Here's 1030 this morning. Futurecast starts to clear out and then it gives us bright sunshine at noon and bright sunshine the rest of the day. That would be enough to get us at least into the upper 60s and maybe 70. Right now it's 53 in Salem. Again, this is a mild batch of air. Uh, Seattle's at 48. The Dow's at 49. Bend is at 45. It's going to be beautifully sunny east of the Cascades today as well. It is freezing down in uh, Burns. Uh, here are the uh, forecast numbers that we're following. Salem, this, these are raw computer numbers. I didn't change them. 68 degrees in Salem. Wind southeast 5 to 10. This does give Vancouver, uh, yeah, 70 degrees right there. I mean, come on, the computer's smart, isn't it? Well, some days it is, some days it's not. 70 today. 61 tomorrow. Tomorrow we have light rain showers. Those could pick up during the morning hours or back to dry weather on Thursday and Friday. If we don't all believe this won't happen, you must be a believer. Put it out there in the universe, Rod. <laughs> Tell us about your Rod on the job. Oh, I have that coming up, Nona, yes. So we went to KXL and I got to sit in the uh, studio and play along. You know, radio is so much fun. It's just you and the microphone. They can <laughs> cut you off, though, if they don't like what you're saying. <laughs> That's coming up in the next half hour. <laughs> the old cane off the side of the uh, yeah play. All right, well, coming up still, raising awareness both for others and her own health. In two minutes, you're going to meet the nurse drawing attention to an often overlooked disease, a move she says helps her keep pushing in her own fight.